Uh, hello. <laughs> how's, how's your drinks so far? <laughs> Good? What? Uh, what? what? Uh, microphones, drinks are yeah. ready. <clears throat> Thank you. I really admire your skill in, in pronouncing Croatian names by now. It must be really hard. And we have a representative of the Kingdom of the Netherlands here as well. Um, it's a great panel. Uh, my name is Nick. I've been here about 40 minutes ago, maybe. So I'm not going to introduce myself. I'm based in Japan, but we are all about here about our great panel. We're going to talk about uh, startups and corporates, uh, how they can interact with each other, how can they bring or add value to what they do, uh, because we are all in this kind of together. So I think we might as well talk about this. We have a very diverse panel in terms of company background. We have uh, bigger banks, legacy banks, if we can call them that way. We have startup fintechs. We have a fintech startup in crypto. And then we have consultants that work with basically all of those things. It's better if you guys introduce yourselves uh, and what you do maybe for, if you're for our audience as well, what your company does, but your, uh, your, your personal background and how you came to be here at Shift. Maybe we start from the far side. I think Svetlana, you would be probably. Okay, thank you. Hello to everyone. I'm Svetlana Petrovic. I uh, am in the banking industry for 15 years now, and today I am the owner of mobile and internet banking in Hrvatska Poštanska banka. Uh, for uh, Croatian market, Hrvatska Poštanska banka is known as a traditional bank. But I don't. Uh, in in large, uh, in last uh, five years, we did a lot of innovations. I'm not going to list them all, but uh, it's good to emphasize that um, we are not a uh, world traditional bank for quite some time now. And one of our strategic um, guidelines is digitalization and innovation. So that's that's something that, that I like to emphasize because for. For example, in Croatian market, uh, we as one um, middle-sized bank uh, launched first, um, we did innovation in opening a bank account, uh, tr uh, a transactional bank account through mobile phone. And uh, the one innovation that uh, I also like to, to mention is uh, eBranch. And uh, in this Croatian market, uh, we um, have this, um, E-branch is, uh, is um, in the same scope as a physical branch. So this is the, the uh, really um, um, also in, uh, innovation because uh, other banks do have uh, that E-branch, but uh, for, an op for open an account and for maybe to get a, a loan, but uh, we uh, really put the whole scope of physical branch into E-branch. And uh, once you are our client, you can do almost everything to that uh, uh, E-branch. E -branch. So that's kind of a good innovation. Thank you, Svetlana. Leonard, our foreign correspondent here. Yes. Please tell I'm us about reason, what you do. I'm, I'm the reason you have to speak uh, English, right? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, thanks for being here. Thanks. Um, my name is Leonard Koopmans. Um, I'm the founder and CEO of Magnius. Magnius uh, started um, a couple of years ago. Um, before this company, I had, my, uh, I had another company. Uh, we had, uh, I had an uh, online fashion company. You couldn't say it, but um, really I did. And I sold that company, but um, I was a merchant. A merchant in the way that uh, I used uh, Agen, the big uh, fintech company from Netherlands, as a uh, PSP. Um, but I was not very happy with uh, what they did for me as a merchant, because um, as a merchant, you're interested in conversion optimization, in um, lower transaction costs, in less fraud, stuff like that. And they didn't help me that much. So what I did is after I sold my company, I started Magnius, and I built a platform uh, where I make it able to, for banks and PSPs and acquirers to face the digital challenge of these days to innovate in digital payments. So what we basically do with Magnius is we help uh, banks all over the world, PSPs all over the world to innovate. So um, we help them uh, to offer um, omni-channel payments like QR code payments, e-commerce payments, um, 
and stuff like that. So that's what we do. And um, I'm here uh, because uh, we as a startup uh, don't have all the knowledge about um, all the banks in the world, of course. So we work with a partner. We have a partner model and um, in Eastern and Central Europe, we have a great partner. And uh, we discuss together that it's, uh, it makes very, uh, sense, very good sense to become uh, a speaker and uh, have a booth here on the Shift Conference. And I really like it here, guys. So uh, great conference. Thank you. Glad to have you in Croatia. <coughs> Now I expect a big cheer from the first row here. <laughs> Dan, <laughs> please tell us what you do here. <laughs> uh, hi, everybody. My name is Dan. I'm from uh, Cryptomat. Cryptomat, basically a startup that we started with, um, with our passion towards cryptocurrencies and what they bring to, to the people. Because we believe that basically everybody deserves crypto in a way. And as the, the entire blockchain world and, and cryptocurrencies were kind of too technical for regular people to understand, uh, we decided that we will create um, a service where actually anybody can buy, sell and use cryptocurrencies. Uh, we started in the beginning of last year um, and today uh, Cryptomat is um, a service that is, that is being used in 40 plus countries where people can um, buy more than 25 different cryptocurrencies directly in pair with euro uh, supporting several popular payment methods and uh, we are one of the few uh, services in the world that actually support more than 20 languages because we feel it's important for people to understand what they're doing um, my background is actually in entertainment business so I know what it means to have an event like this. So thumbs up for Ivan and the team for putting an event like this. Yeah, big uh, clap for, for Shift. So um, from entertainment business, I went to marketing and after that to business development. And I got involved with these guys in the first row. And um, what actually started as an experiment, whether we are capable of building a service like this, is now my passion and my uh, kind of occupation and um, what we tend to kind of become is the first choice of people when they decide to enter into the world of crypto um, I'm excited to join this panel because in my work I work with classical financial institutions on a daily basis and there is a lot of challenges that we face and um, but it's not all not that black things have changed in, in the last year so if I would be speaking here last year about this topic, I would be really, really rude. But today uh, is going to be okay. Uh, the, the Nino, our last representative here, introduction. Hi, I'm Nino. I'm a cons consultant at uh, Coios. Uh, I've been working in banking sector for over 10 years uh, in different roles as a tech consultant, uh, business analyst uh, on various projects in credit risk management, compliance and um, for uh, now a year I'm serving as a board member of Coios, we are a company that's into data and um, application development, uh, we're helping the banks to build their infrastructure uh, concerning the, the data transformation integration and uh, we are also pushing some uh, big data and uh, solutions from a data science world into the banking sector. And your clients are mostly bigger institutions usually? Yes. Yeah. Okay, we did the introduction part and everything. So we talk about startups, we talk about corporates on the other side. We talk about how they come together on the market against each other or ideally together with each other. But let's think about banks or just financial institutions. They've been around for decades, some of them for centuries, and they took a long time to establish their reputation. And now suddenly all these new products are coming out and you know, with, with all kinds of fintech products, but also crypto and so on and banks are kind of maybe struggling. I mean, what's wrong with banks? Why are we not traditionally 
just going to do banks as we work for our parents and our grandparents? Who wants to start with that I question? Want, I want to start. Nothing is wrong with <laughs> banks. <laughs> banks are beautiful. Okay, the panel is over. <laughs> banks are great. Let's just all go home. No. Okay, what is going on? Banks for quite some time were um, only players on the financial market. But now uh, here are new players. And really, and there is a dogma that are we uh, competitors or are we friends and potential partners with fintechs? And we in APHB, I, I could speak for APHB, uh, uh, but I think the other banks on, banks on creation markets thinks uh, almost the same. Uh, we look at them as a potential partners because for the banks, um, the user experience is the most important thing. And we think that we could get uh, more uh, benefit to our customers, uh, our clients and potential clients with, with uh, good things that we can produce with partners or without them. Uh, I was, I'm kind of out of topic now, uh, but not for, for long. I, I just want to say something. I was in some interesting conference um, uh, five days ago, it was user experience conference, where um, uh, <laughs> what a bank going to be challenged with and uh, all uh, traditional financial institutions uh, with creating a customer centric culture. You know, because um, before this um, uh, rapid technology and uh, technology uh, revolution, it was, um, okay, we are going to do something and uh, people are going uh, to see that this is their need and they are going to use it. But in this customer-centric uh, age that is going to come uh, and if we are going to be 100% uh, customer-centric uh, financial institu institutions, it's all uh, backwards. We should think what customer, uh, a customer wants and then technology should adapt, not of technology first and then customer. And in, um, there was um, an interesting um, real life example. I think that was a Budapest bank that um, made a whole program of transformation, how to become a customer centric bank. And um, interesting projects were, uh, I think that one was called uh, a way, way towards a lovable bank. And they, what they did, they did the contents for clients and non-clients. Uh, say to us, what is your uh, biggest wish? And you cannot uh, accomplish it by yourself. And we are going to accomplish it for you. And um, they spread, uh, of course, all around social networks, everything. And they got enormous results from it. So they are building... Um, customer satisfaction, not just we are satisfied with our bank, but banks in the future, I think, will have to create a fence around its business to, to uh, um, retain their clients and to get uh, more clients around this competitive um, area. And the one thing also that they did is uh, to create a customer-centric um, bank or, uh, or institution. Um, you have to uh, have people uh, who work for you also with that customer-centric mind. And uh, one project also that they have is um, we hire people not for DNA, but for, not for MBA, but for DNA. So they, they skipped uh, classic interviews for, for uh, jobs. Uh, they put, I don't know, 15 people that applied for a job in one room and just watched what people are going to do. And if they also set, has set, set some rules for themselves, uh, what uh, people with right DNA for customer-centric <laughs> company should uh, how, uh, behave, how uh, he should behave. And they are going, uh, they started to uh, hire people with with that kind of uh, rules. So uh, banks are going in that direction mm -hmm. in, in every other so way. I think it's, if this panel was held like maybe five years ago, mm -hmm. I think a lot of, we will be discussing about what is digitalization, what is, fin what are fintechs maybe as well. Mm -hmm. And definitely what is crypto, <laughs> like we'll be discussing about that. Mm -hmm. But, 
I think we moved on. I think we are now at a point where pretty much all the banks are realizing, okay, we need to digitalize. We need to partner with startups. We need to be innovative or find innovation outside. Uh, so we're, and now it's, a, I think with a lot of players now, it's a question how. And this is where our two, I guess, startups here on stage and the consultant come in place. Um, can the banks that have the realization they have a customer-centric focus, they want to digitalize, they want to come up with new products, can they make it? Can they partner with you guys? Leonard? Yeah. So, sorry. Yeah, I, I really believe they can because um, if you look, there, there, there is something going on with the digital payments, of course, the online payments. If you look at, uh, look at the, um, the value of companies like WorldPay, Argen, stuff like that, companies like that, they even are valued higher than big banks like the German, uh, German bank, the Deutsche Bank. Mm -hmm. Um, well, Deutsche Bank is not a good example, right? Yeah. <laughs> they, no, okay. they tagged a lot. They're right? going down, yeah. 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 But a lot of banks, uh, they missed the boat. They yeah. missed the exit. But they're realizing now what they're good at. Uh, in my opinion, the banks uh, have a very sweet spot. Uh, it, in a market where change is coming, but the, the banks are adaptable to change, but they still have to focus on the things that they are good at. And in my opinion, they are good in helping their clients. Um, they're good in compliance, they're good in regulations and stuff like that. What they're less good at is, uh, um, in my opinion, have their own developer teams. Uh, that's hard for them uh, to uh, easily uh, innovate. Um, in, in, the, in the Netherlands, you see a lot of banks who do innovation and they do partner up with companies like us as well. So uh, they're making things happen. and. And we, we uh, make part of this uh, journey of the banks uh, all over the world. Uh, so, uh, in my opinion, the banks are definitely not too late in, uh, in, in a lot of fields. Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, I really believe they will stay to be here um, for the future to come. Mm -hmm. Guys on the right. Yeah. Um, so, <laughs> I'm coming from an industry that banks were trying to ignore mm -hmm. for a couple of years. And uh, we are an Estonian company, and whenever we come to a market, we try to take kind of a local approach to that market. And I can tell you an example from last year. Um, we were kind of pivoting, I think, in Croatia, and we contacted around, I don't know how many banks there are in Croatia, I believe like 12 or 15 of them. Yeah. Uh, five never answered. And the other one said, no, we don't want to work with you. Uh, you. You said you're not going to talk against banks sorry? today. <laughs> <laughs> we had a, we had a I heard so you at the beginning. What, I, what I'm, what I'm, uh, what I'm point, now things are changing. Yeah. So now, uh, oh, it was the same in Germany, it was the same what in, in, in our co country where the company is in Estonia. Now we're talking to banks, so we're going to come back to Croatia as well. But mm. it's not in our focus. But um, what I want to say is that, uh, coming from your question, there's nothing wrong with banks. They are where they need to be, mm -hmm. and they're doing their stuff really good because they're, building, they're bringing the trust into the financial industry because at the end, we are handling other people's assets, including us. And to build a trust like this, it takes time, it takes tradition, it takes yeah. regulation, and all of that stuff that we as a startup, we find it hard to, uh, to, to make. And also the regulation is not clear yet. So. In my opinion, we uh, need to coexist, we need to work together, but um, I believe that in past, uh, from my experience, pa uh, banks did not listen to many of the fintech startups, but now they started listening because they could just not ignore us, ignore us anymore. And it's easy for smaller teams to be innovative and fast and uh, suggest new things than with banks because w I know how much security there is in banks and what are the protocols that need to happen there for, us, for like small changes to happen. And um, yeah, that's kind of... Yeah, I think, I mean, in defense of banks, it's not a thing that happens only in finance. It's, I mean, in, in advertising, in yeah. even in really extremely scientific industries like pharma or food science, you know, like food, uh, agriculture, you have all these startups now coming up and challenging the big 
legacy systems because exactly because of what Dan said right now. They're moving faster. They can experiment and be agile much faster. So I think. Yeah, so I think it's not exclusive but, to finance. But right? Nicola, as Dan said, things are really changing. Yeah. Banks, banks are really open. Uh, as, as he said, we are good in security. We are good in compliance. That's that's the basis for the for the customer to trust their money mm -hmm. to some institution. So banks really have that advantage. Yes. Yeah. Yes, that's true, but uh, there are also some good points in current state of banking and some not so good. Uh, I've, for example, I've checked uh, in one large Croatian bank, I've been checking for some fees, and I found that uh, 18 PDFs documents, each one around That's also four, changing. Five, <laughs> up to six pages each containing fees yeah. for the different payment services. I mean, that's insane. Uh, th there are really some things, and even if they are there, they are not transparent in the application, and I'm trying to pay something. I really don't know how much is that's going to cost me in the end. So there, there are some things in the banks that's not so good, but I'm also on the side of banks. No, no, no. I, I, I said bank, banks' uh, times are changing and are going to change uh, more. So um, I didn't mention user experience just as a buzzword. Really, uh, I think customer will decide at the end. So if we are going to produce something that customer will like to use and like and use it easily, then it's going to be a good product. Banks yeah. could not survive yeah. with, mm -hmm. I don't know, how many sheets that, that you mentioned. You know? So times are changing. Yeah. Uh, I think uh, that's really a, 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 maybe a good match between, uh, you know, fintech innovation and, uh, and uh, uh, currently uh, banking state they are because um, uh, there are a lot of you can get those features in two ways you can either develop them in house mm -hmm. or you can get them from the outside uh, from my experience the internal teams are already up to their noses with, uh, with uh, yeah, work and I'm not sure there's a really a lot of space <coughs> to, to take on such a grand, or not so grand, but large-scale projects to push bank in that, banks in that direction. So I think it's a natural match for the, for the banks and fintech companies, so the bank can really get what they need. Uh, there are enormous number of uh, 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 fintechs offering uh, wide range of, of services and solutions. So yes, why bank, not bank can be fast on the market with mm. fintechs. Yes, they, so they can use uh, uh, done solutions and integrate in their system. So I'm yeah. What, what I think the, the fintechs uh, really uh, do very, very well in this market is that they shake up, they shake up the market and the, the banks they will need to follow because otherwise they will just fail. Mm -hmm. So, and you, you see them actually picking up right now. The, the one market faster than the other one, but that makes sense, right? Mm -hmm. Because uh, some markets are a little bit further in the process of uh, adaption to change, adaptable to change. Um, but in the end, I think um, uh, some fintech companies will conquer markets where the banks uh, uh, are too late. Mm -hmm. So, and that's also interesting to see, uh, see business models like uh, blockchain-based models where everything is easier for the for the for the consumers. Mm -hmm. um, yesterday, I saw a pitch of uh, Monolith. Uh, it's like an alternative bank uh, based on Ethereum, mm -hmm. and it's very interesting. Mm -hmm. <coughs> I think one more thing is like to take a little bit of settlement aside because. You guys are all from the <laughs> other side. Aren't uh, we on the same side? Uh, yeah. <laughs> finance, yeah, potential partners. Fin finance, um, finance, yeah. that's, that's exactly true. Like finance is a heavily regulated sector for obvious reasons. And Leonard, you mentioned compliance before. Mm. Uh, banks have been around for a long time. They have com comply. 
and the startups now even governments provide sandboxes and so on and so forth so you don't have those requirements and then you can obviously grow faster how is it at what point do, should a partnership happen between a startup and a fintech i know this is a very vague question because we can have a lot of services a lot of stages a lot of growth growth stages that we can talk about but at what level would you think a, a institution doesn't have to be a bank or insurance company some kind of bigger uh, a player on the market has to meets a startup and when do they click and i'm talking here it can be even not necessarily like a client uh, relationship it can be like a partnership developing uh, new technologies working uh, white labeling all, all kinds of stuff yeah so, so, so sorry to answer this yeah. one again but I, I believe um, uh, the, 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 the fintech companies, they must invest in the, their ideas and they must solve a problem that in this case the banks have mm -hmm. or whichever target group you have as a, mm -hmm. as a company. So in this case, Magnus as a startup, um, we offer products to banks in small portions. We just want to try to build up an MVP process with, with, with banks to start the innovation. Work around a bit, test a little bit, and then continue in the process of using it full blown. So I, I believe uh, uh, this is um, almost risk free for the banks to start with, because the banks because they have to be uh, compliant and uh, look at their trust because uh, of the customers um, it is it's good to start slow and easily and um, there's less risk for the banks to start but i think for both parts this is the best way to start yeah, banks, sorry, banks are already doing that in, in uh, those innovations that I mentioned. We uh, done it with the partners, you know, with fintech uh, companies, you know. So banks, banks are already in that stage, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah. Here. So the good thing happening, what I see is, it's not only, like you said, when to approach and when to start a partnership, but what I like is that I see banks and also national banks uh, uh, creating sandboxes and programs for uh, potential startups to come mm -hmm. and evaluate the idea if this is okay or not okay. And I see banks kind of being actively involved now in searching for innovation because before there was none of that. You would need to have like really strong relation, build relationships and come with the idea and try to sell it to the banks. But now um, I believe it's much easier to actually present your idea to the bank and evolve it together with the bank because if you're a, like 25 years old and you want to do something for those guys, you don't know how they do things. You, mm -hmm. you cannot know. And if you work together with them in a program that they organize, then it's much more easier. Mm -hmm. So that's a great thing. Awesome. You know, do, you, do you think and meeting... Just one more thing. Yes. And like seeing uh, this year on this conference, that there is uh, people from National Bank of Croatia. Uh, so they also Is there think, people from National yeah, Bank yeah. of Croatia here? Four, four guys in, in, in one day. The Croatian so. Central Bank people, no? And, and they're right. also creating a kind of a program for fintechs yeah. to, to, to promote that, to, to, uh, to get them on board. So that's good. I think, like, I, to your point, I really think it was before maybe you needed to, to attract a bank who was a, like an established player on the market. You have to show some traction. You have to show, like, oh, this is what I bring to the table. And now it's more like banks going like, what's interesting out there, right? Correct. Like, yeah, what, yeah. Can, what can we use? What's interesting? I mean, maybe on the technical side, what you guys do? Do you see that as well? Are they looking for, I know like big investment banks, talking about Goldman Sachs and so on, they hire an enormous amount of engineers now. Like more engineers than bankers, basically. That's not us, we still have 15 minutes. Okay. Um, you know, what do you think? Like on the, on the banks, on the... Uh, on the well, infrastructure side. I think uh, that I mean, under the hood, the banks have been uh, uh, innovating, uh, especially in the, in the data layers. But that, that's not the front end. That's not visible to the users. There, there is a lot of developments on the uh, on the side of uh, credit risk management. That there, that there really, uh, 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 a lot of code and a lot of data has been 
collected, and you can see it with the uh, expansion of the data warehouses. So uh, maybe those those uh, changes weren't so visible, and they were, weren't maybe uh, that user experience centered, uh, but they were there. Uh, I've been on uh, conferences in banking for uh, quite some years, and uh, even before the fintech exploded. And uh, really, at that time, there were warning signs. Uh, look out for your payment services. Uh, telcos are coming to get it. Really, nothing much happened. Uh, so there were really no, no steps from the banks in that direction. But I think now, as this uh, fintech world exploded and there are really a lot of uh, uh, solutions and there are really some disruptive technologies we'll see uh, what of it will survive and bring some viable uh, uh, long-term su successful product uh, to the market uh, but uh, I think it, it has pushed banks to maybe change a bit uh, view on the technology and maybe partnerships with, uh, with the tech companies. Maybe if before they were a bit closed for maybe some areas. Today uh, they opened up, I so they are open. currently <laughs> open on, on any, every front that can bring yeah. them. Uh, so if, you have a, if you're a fintech with a good solution, fintech startup, now is the time to go to the bank, if they didn't reach out to you already. Uh, so let's speak about a wider thing, an ecosystem which creates good stuff, I think. Uh, doesn't have to be geographically limited, but in theory, what in your opinion, and anyone can take this question, creates a good health ecosystem? By good health ecosystem, I think there's a lot of competition, there's a lot of new ideas coming up, there's, it's easy for new ideas to, to develop, it's easy for, for existing players to develop new ideas as well, or, or partner. So we definitely need the open mindset from the bank, which we now have, as we heard. And also we need like startups that are, are willing to work with those banks. What else do we need? Do we need capital? Do we need talent? What is, that? What is the country, patience? country you that will support all of that. And we have a Croatian national bank here, so the, yeah. the, the state also supports yeah. that. Yeah. So, so we, need a, we need a public sector support? Yes. Anything else? Yeah, I, what I told, as a startup, you have to be patient. Patience. <laughs> Patience. But, and, and you have to be funded as well, because otherwise you cannot survive in this, uh, in this market. Capital is a crucial thing for a startup. Yeah, but because but banks some, are slow. This, this is something where banks can come in very, and they do come in very hefty with corporate venture capital, with accelerators and stuff like this, partnerships and client relationships as well. I mean, that, that can be something. Guys, yeah, ecosystem. Uh, 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 just, yeah. Uh, I think a good thing from uh, from our experience. So we are we are a team from Slovenia. Mm -hmm. We have a company, uh, and we have a team in Serbia. We have a team in other countries. Our company is in Estonia. I'm uh, the director of that company. I've never been to Estonia. <laughs> mm. I'm a new resident of that country, and I'm actually able to run the company from our office in Ljubljana, uh, and we have an accountant there, an office there, and everything. But I do not need to travel. And this is a great experience how uh, an ecosystem with, with the e-governance can actually help uh, build up startups and fintechs and so on and so. And Estonia is, uh, like, is booming with that. A lot of companies have, uh, are being established there, startups and so on and so on. And that's, so whatever, whatever part you put into this ecosystem is good not to limit you, but to kind of push you forward. Mm -hmm. And with banks okay again speaking from the us being in crypto space uh that was that was a big issue for us we could not so we could not get the bank account to it's a big issue in crypto right yeah it is so and, and we are like but sorry what, yeah, again yeah. i'm defending banks here a lot Go it ahead. is it is a bank issue but isn't it a regular regulatory issue isn't yes. it a government so that's, issue more that's, that, that, that's what i wanted to yeah. mention so um you cannot just put everybody in the same bucket. Yeah. At least take like those five minutes and talk to the guys and listen what they have to say. Because we, uh, when we started this company, uh, uh, one of the like I have three kids, and we got involved in fintech, we got involved in crypto, and I said I do not want to go to jail. 
So everything we did, all the compliance, all the self-regulation that we did, because the regulation didn't exist at that time, we kind of did everything to protect ourselves and our users uh, to be everything, everything on the same side. And we took, we learned from those guys how they do it. Uh, but, and what I wanted to say is just listen at least to the guys. So there might be something good out there. And um, yeah. As, did, so I guess you work with governments a lot, with regulators? Sorry? You work with regulators a lot? Yes, lately a lot. Is it easier to work with corporates or with regulators for you? Um, Corporate partners or public sector partners? So at the moment we are talking a lot with regulators because uh, they are trying to regulate what we do uh -huh. and how people actually use this new technology and uh, they do not know how to do it. Uh, That's Estonian regulators? Or? Uh, you know, we're talking with all the regulators all really. lately, a lot with German especially. Mm -hmm. And um, it's, a, it's a hard job for us uh, to do that. Um, but it's okay, they're now talking. At least they're talking, they're communicating, they're organizing round tables, they're listening. Uh, I was just now in, uh, on a conference in, in, in Malaga uh, where there was regulators from like, mostly all EU countries there, uh, where there was guys from uh, Libra Association, where there was the World Bank, uh, 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 European Central Bank, and so on. And everybody is interested about blockchain, what is, what is happening, how this is evolving. So from, from my perspective, there is a big, big uh, step forward mm -hmm. that happened. Uh, Laren, maybe you, you, you work a lot in partnerships. Maybe if interesting use case, like a bad case or a good case example of working with a partner, and maybe even matters at what stage of your company, right? So if it, if it was a pleasant or non so pleasant experience, and what was wrong there? Like, is it not understanding what you do or being skeptical about your mm -hmm. services, or was it just okay, we like this guy, we want to work with him. Well, well an interesting um, thing we are working on right now is, um, I cannot tell the name of the company because it's NDA, uh, there's an NDA for mm -hmm. it, but it's one of the big four accountancy firms. So okay. can, we, can we guess four times? <laughs> <laughs> you can. Or and three, I, I, sorry. I wink to you and then... Can I guess three <laughs> times? That's enough <laughs> of my bet. Yeah, no, no, we are working uh, with this company and um, uh, we're working on, um, on a very great uh, module and it's uh, to solve the indirect tax for e-commerce companies uh, where we uh, merchants have to pay when they sell internationally, they have to say, uh, 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 do the VAT in uh, s several countries. But I started talking with this company, I think, almost a year ago. So I started with uh, LOI, an MOU, uh, then um, an AOU, and that's... POC. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We're no, gonna... Memorandum of Understanding, yeah. and a Letter of Intent, an Agreement of Understanding, uh, the Partnership Agreement, <laughs> and stuff like that. And we're still not working on it right now, but... <laughs> that's. Starting like, sound uh, like uh, those yeah. banking fees documents. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so partnering up, and uh, what, that's what I meant um, earlier as well. If you have a great idea, if you can solve a problem, as a fintech, you also have to have patience, and you have to walk the walk. So we're talking about the path for startups, and the path is sometimes a long path. In my, uh, I'm working already three years for Magnus right now, and it's a long path, but it's, it's worth everything. Mm -hmm. But uh, uh, yeah, and, and I hope all the startups in this, in this room, uh, uh, please don't uh, uh, stop, don't, uh, but continue and uh, dominate the thing that you're good at. And, and uh, talk to banks. <laughs> yeah, no, but stay in conversation with them yeah. and please be patient. Mm -hmm. I'm not patient, yeah. but you need to be patient <laughs> and you need to take all the steps to become successful mm -hmm. and stay positive. So that those are steps uh, and, and, and things I uh, can tell you that uh, will in the end will make a partnership a success. But to give another example, you also have to uh, uh, be very aware that sometimes you can pull on a dead horse, it's a saying in the Netherlands, but mm -hmm. 
it never works, so let, let it go. Mm -hmm. So also make a good choice as an entrepreneur to not drain all your money in the wrong uh, projects. Fl flight or and, fight. Yeah, yeah. And, and I had some bad examples as well for me, so I also drained some money from investors, mm -hmm. but um, sometimes you need some good advice. So if there are some founders here in the room, uh, what my, in my experience is um, it's very interesting to speak with uh, uh, guys from the market, of course, uh, strategy consultants, helping you out uh, uh, to pick, to do the right things. So uh, yeah, those are two examples of uh, uh, partnerships. So we, we, time is flying insanely. Like I didn't go to half of the questions that we talked about <laughs> before. Uh, then on your side, and then you guys are way on the, if I may say, on the edge of innovation right now in finance, crypto stuff, you're, you work a lot with gaming. I talked to Sergio yesterday about it as well. Um, it's uh, so okay payments I understand like loan products insurance products if you come as a fintech with better solutions better UX and you work with banks uh, or insurance companies and institutions yeah it makes sense they can see value but then you come with crypto and gaming and 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 you know NFTs and stuff like this how how outlandish is to talk to to big players about that it's our, our need from, from the classical financial institutions like them, it's, it's like really simple. So we, we are kind of a, a, a meeting point where crypto and fiat meets. And we want to make this transition as seamless as possible. And we, are, we need them to build this user experience to be seamless. Because otherwise people cannot spend their or use their fiat to go into crypto and back. And then there are different reasons why people actually buy crypto or not. But nevertheless, so we are quite simple. We do not ask for like um, some magic to happen, but we just want to make better user experience. And we have challenges on this on this path. And these challenges are usually related with the security of the funds. And there are, we are also talking to some banks and, and telling them what are the things that we need? What are the products that they don't have yet? They could have them because they have them for other like uh, lawyers or, mm -hmm. or brokerage companies and stuff like that, that we would also need, but they cannot give it to us yet. So uh, with us now, when we are being around for a year and a half and we have volumes and we have users and they can earn fees, now we're interested. Uh, uh, they're mm -hmm. interested to talk to us. And uh, since uh, the regulation is coming, I believe this will be even more. And I trust that we will be able to develop all the things that we actually need to help people. Okay. Uh, we good? We good. <laughs> Sorry. I have, <laughs> I have traumas from last time. Um, so we have two and a half minutes left. Does anyone have any questions in the audience? I think we have time for one. One unique question targeted going once, twice, one. There you go. There. Make it count because it's, uh, it's the only one <laughs> It's going to happen today. Please introduce yourself. I said, tell us. Uh, so my name is Ivo Spiegel. I, just, I actually don't have a question. I just have a quick suggestion for Dan. So it's a shame that you haven't been to Tallinn. It's a really nice city. So I would urge you to go, but go in the spring or summer. Now the days are a bit short. That's all for me. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Tallinn is. Uh, okay, we have two minutes. I, I am something I want to do as uh, the game I wanted to do the last time as well. Very quickly, I'm going to read a few concepts to you and then I'm going to ask you if they are underrated or overrated in your opinion. So you, get to say, you hear it and you get to say overrated or underrated. And all four of you get an answer. We're going to go one by one. Uh, I hope Elena is not here anymore. Revolut. Overrated. Overrated. Underrated. Underrated. Interesting. Overrated. Wow. <laughs> Overrated. Overrated? Good. <laughs> the overrated get it. Transfer wise, you know. Well, it's not so much of a difference. Uh, Same. Overrated. Overrated? Wow. Um, underrated as well. Underrated. Oh, wow. Is underrated. It? Oh, Nino, you're getting smashed here. <laughs> uh, Goldman Sachs. What? Goldman, as in Goldman Sachs. Goldman that one has been for a long, long time. Uh, I think 
Underrated. Underrated? Overrated. Overrated. <laughs> Overrated. Oh my god, it's like, you know, you have to talk to everyone else <laughs> afterwards. We're gonna have um, we're gonna give you a break. Let's start from the other side now. Blockchain. Mm, underrated. <laughs> Definitely underrated. Underrated all the way. I'm going to go against again. Wow. <laughs> wow, this is I never had this before. Oh this is this is a very touchy subject now. Bitcoin. Underrated at this time. Overrated at this time. Sorry. Okay. Yeah. Overrated. Overrated? Underrated. I have to comment this. Uh, one year ago I seen the news that uh, Bitcoin conference in Miami yeah. wasn't accepting uh, entrance fees in bitcoins. Okay, so you say over, overrated. I think okay. That's enough. Last one, I swear, I swear, last one. Like open banking, the concept of open banking, you know, open data, PSD2, and so on. Also, at this time, overrated. Interesting. Overrated. <laughs> Dan is not happy with your answer. We're going to be drinking um, afterwards. Uh, I would say underrated. Yeah. I would say overrated. I would agree with Dan here, so with a minority. Yeah. Uh, this has been amazing. Thank you so much. This has been a great uh, panel. If you want to talk to them afterwards, find them. The party is here, it's, or drinks are here. It's the first panel in my life where I'm drinking whiskey on the stage. <laughs> also, this has not been whiskey. I'm, I'm, I don't know what are you yeah. talking about. What, this is, this. This is apple so juice. Apple Give juice. them a round of applause and talk Thank to you. them later. Thank you.